In today's video, we will be testing the content view GUI elements in our UI test to test the tap and filtering UI functionality. The first thing we need to do is to create a new UI test case class. To do that, we can click on the arrow down below on the left hand corner, this one here. and then select new file select UI test case class click on next give the class a name I'll just call it content view UI test because we're testing the content view click on next and then click on create. Then delete all of our test methods within our class. Next, add the following method override funk setup with error continue after failure equals false so if the test fails we don't want it to continue Next, create our test method. Bunk test search bar interaction throws let app equals etc UI application. app.launch that launches the app when the app launches we want the search bar to be tapped There should be an S at the end of fields and the search bar string that was applied to the accessibility section within the content view. So if I go to the content view, I just copy and I'll just copy the search bar text. If I go to the content view, do a quick find. As you can see, this is what we're testing the search bar so how we do it we have to label it with dot accessibility as the identifier so that we can execute our UI test so that will be testing the search bar functionality within our struct search bar view Let's type in app dot type text iPhone So we want the search bar results to filter on iPhone XC text assert equal app dot text field
search bar dot value as string iPhone. So on this line, line 24, we just verify if the search text is correctly entered. So does the search text iPhone, is it equal to what we typed in here? iPhone. I forgot to add the UI test target. So what we need to do is to click on file and then new, select target. And then type in test and then select UI testing bundle. Click on next. Accept the defaults. Just click on finish. And then the class that we created in the content view UI test, this one here, what we should do then let's just copy it or just move it, just cut it. Into this file here, the first one selected. And then just overwrite all the code that's in this file. And then go back to the content view, UI test, and then um, just delete it. Now, let's try to run it to see if it works or not. compiling at the moment. Let's run it again. You can see you entered iPhone into the search bar. So the next test that we will do is to do this like something similar, but it will enter iPhone X into the search bar and then navigate to the detail view so we can see all of the details of that product. We just need to create another test method, func test product interaction. Throws let app equals UI, I mean, let app equals XC UI application.
at dot buttons right, let's just use the same iPhone iPhone so we're going to tap on the same iPhone that we tapped on before So what that line means on line 30, so tap on the product button with the type tool iPhone. And then when this tapped, it will navigate to the details view. App dot navigation, navigation bars, dot buttons, elements. Bound by zero. Dot tap. The purpose of that line is that it will go back to the content view afterwards. And how we do that? We have to specify. Yeah, we need to specify it by. Adding the following, let's see, T as a true app dot navigation bars products wait for existence timeout five seconds. The purpose of that line is to verify if we have returned back to the content view. So it will wait for about five seconds. So let's try it all again. What happened there? There's some type of error. Try it again. Okay, I'll try it with iPhone X and see if that works. Now the reason why it's not working, after lines 28, we forgot to include app.launch to launch the test. Let's try it now. Just compiling at the moment.
So afterwards, it should filter by iPhone X and then display it onto the content view. Happened quite quickly, so I'll run it again. That's code is very slow. You can see displayed iPhone X on the content view. Thank you for joining us. If you found this tutorial helpful, please comment, like and subscribe. See you next week.